Aloha and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around the world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, Moana Nui Akea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper, and the title of today's episode is The Sickle Teen Nation Aboriginal Land Title, Canada's Supreme Court Landmark Decision. It's an honor to have two amazing individuals with me, Chief and Cultural Ambassador, sharing their perspectives on the importance of the current 21st session of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Chief Francis, can you share with me a little bit about your ancestral homelands and the unique culture and cosmology of the amazing Sikultin Nation? Thank you. Uh, yeah, we have a very vast uh, land base. Uh, uh, we have a few big lakes, uh, river system, uh, we got about a million salmon that come back every year. Uh, we got pretty well all the animals, uh, you know, uh, we got uh, pretty cold winters. Uh, we had uh, hot summers. Uh, yeah, we we pretty well got everything that uh, we need to uh, to live uh, our our cultural lifestyle, uh, traditional lifestyle. You know, so we're we're pretty fortunate. Thank you so much, Payal. What was it like growing up in the nation and how have you been able to make sure that the cultural values are able to continue and even I would say be in abundance in your lifetime and the amazing work that you do? Yeah, I feel like it's something that uh, I don't I don't realize that uh, we take it for advantage of until we till we travel a lot more for for me growing up, it was every summer being able to catch hundreds of sockeye salmon a day, uh, going out and harvesting uh, deer, moose, elk, and it was such an abundance of 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 uh, food and being able to go out and harvest the berries, going out to harvest the medicines, going out to explore the land and it, and it provides very easily to sustain us as, as a people and it's not until uh, I'm 24 now and it's not until I started uh, coming out into so-called civilization into the cities and grocery stores and coming to places like New York and going to Geneva and seeing like a lot of the skid rows and how how less fortunate a lot of people are uh, compared to us as indigenous people. I, there's there's a lot of our own people who are less fortunate, but who are stuck on what we call the black road, and that's to do with like uh, getting caught up in drugs and alcohol. And uh, but for the people that live traditionally out on the land, they're still uh, communities in our nation that go without electricity, they go without running water, and that's everyday life for them. It's it's not something that they're worried about. We can drink straight out of our of our rivers, out of the lakes and the creeks, and we don't have to be worried about it being tainted or having any type of chemicals in them. It's all natural. So it's um it's very very uh, heartwarming to know where I come from, to know uh, that's uh, the territory, the Tsaitkotin territory that we come from. So it's, uh, it makes me value that uh, so much more being able to, to look back on it and to, to, to say that I'm Tsaitkotin. And that's basically uh, my, my uh, interpretation of what it is, uh, what title is, what title means to me. And it's just everyday indigenous quote in life, and that's that's how it is. Very refreshing, and that's also the way I felt growing up in Hawaii. Is, you know, you had the ocean, you had the mauna, and you had everything you needed in between, and you don't know because the world defines itself just through consumerism and capitalism. But then you realize you actually have all that you needed is provided from nature in many ways. Chief, could you maybe share with us a bit about the history of the Tsukotin and how you've been able to uphold your traditional values and 
even survive through colonization, but more importantly, be able to provide the path forward for all worlds as we look at more of one of self-determination and sustainable development. Our history is uh, like uh, quite a few other nations, I guess, uh, pretty uh, genocide uh, happened to us. Um, we're not really supposed to be here. We're, we're supposed to have been wiped out by now. Uh, we were pretty vast, uh, maybe, I'm not too sure exactly, but probably in the thousands uh, at one time. And uh, and the government introduced uh, smallpox uh, uh, intentionally into our, our nation a few times. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, redu we were reduced down to about a couple of hundred people. And uh, so that's, they were after the land and uh, all the resources, I guess they were, we have uh, some gold and uh, uh, all those type of things, timber and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so our people got together, uh, some of our war leaders and whatnot, and they, they declared war on the, on the government of the time and they uh, killed quite a few of their their, um, the, the people that were there, the non-natives, and uh, <clears throat> called it the Chilicotin War. And they tricked their leaders into coming in for peace talks, and then they, they hung them. They hung six of our leaders. Uh, and, uh, you know, so they, that's what they did. And, but uh, we're kind of rebounding, uh, you know, uh, we're getting serious about our regaining our land. And uh, 2014, the, there was a su Supreme Court case uh, started out in BC Supreme Court, and then it ended up in Ottawa Supreme Court. And uh, after a hundred and some odd years, uh, they finally said, yeah, you do have title, recognized title, uh, title and rights. And But we've always had that. You know, we, we still do today to all of our territory, as most nations across this country, they all have title also. But uh, we had a bunch of elders that testified, uh, just in most of them in our language, and they had to have interpreters and all that. And uh, so that's what happened. Uh, pretty big area. Uh, about 20% of our territory, I guess, is now a recognized title by the governments and industry and everybody else. and. We're trying to regain the, uh, the, all of it, the, all of our territory and have full, get our full jurisdiction back, which is important for us. And that's the only way we're going to be able to survive uh, as a, as an indigenous set uh, caught in. Uh, that, that, that's where all our, all our power and our, who we are as a, as a people that uh, we don't have to land and uh, our way of life. And it's, it won't work so that the land is the biggest the biggest part of it so that's very important for for us and everybody else that uh, that's indigenous no that's an amazing historical perspective to put it into that realm of really especially in the age of covid too that there was an intentional infliction of disease to try to wipe out your people but your people are still here and then more importantly sharing even the importance of the legal case brought forward in 2014, and then describing some of those important elements of that case, but it all comes back to land. And if indigenous peoples have their lands, then they almost have everything that they need to survive, but also even thrive. Pale, could you describe a little bit of where your land is in Canada? Because many people have trouble with geography and don't know enough about Canada. Can you maybe describe your homeland and share some of them abundance that uh, you're able to enjoy every day and then we'll get also into why that case in 2014 meant so much to you as well yeah we're we're located in uh western canada in uh so-called british columbia central british columbia on what's called the uh, chilcotin plateau and that's about six seven hours north of vancouver bc uh a drive from vancouver and it's in between williams lake bc everything from williams lake bc 
towards Anaheim Lake and Bella Coola, British Columbia, is uh, what we call our Tlaxcotian territory. And <clears throat> there's a wide, wide uh, variety of, uh, of ecosystems in the territory, which ranges from uh, desert Sahara-like uh, um, environments. And then we can go all the way to almost tropical head in kind of south, southwest of the territory uh, down towards our border with the Hamalco Nation um, that goes along the Cascade Mountains that go down uh, British Columbia. And we've got our glacier fed lakes. We've actually got one of the highest elevated uh, lakes in Western Canada. And it's uh, known as uh, Chilco Lake. We call it Tsaitkong B in our language. And it's a, it's a lake that's roughly about 90 to 100 kilometers long and probably about two, three kilometers wide. And that entire lake is, uh, is another world in itself. It's, uh, it sustains not only us as a people, with fresh water, but it uh, it creates a habitat for one of the largest wild sockeye salmons in the in the world, and that's one of our main food sources as a South Dakotan people. And it uh, we we usually expect it to provide at least a million wild sockeye salmon to swim up the Fraser, then into the Chilcotin River, then to the Chilco Lake. And uh, on a good year, usually every four years, it's a, it's a four year cycle where we expect uh, upwards of four to five million wild sockeye salmon to, to swim up and spawn. And so that's how we're known as the river people. It translates to the, the, the word Sakotin translates into the river people. And that's all in part of what it means and how important it is to how the what the the title case meant to me. Uh, back in 2014, I was, I believe I was probably, I was about 15, 14 years old. And when I was there, as a youth, uh, at first they were only sending some elders and and the leaders and i lobbied and and put in my proposals with all the communities saying hey i think the youth uh, should be there as well so i wrote up my proposal and i sent them to all the communities and sent it to the nation and said i got my drum i'm ready to go uh, to sing some songs and to to support as a youth and so that we can show that uh, us as youth uh, also have uh, a voice to be heard uh, on Chilcotin and rights and that's our right as youth uh, to, to be there and to, to show that and to be there and offer that strength whether it's through song or whether it's through prayer and so with with that it's uh, it's uh, like Chief Francis was saying, it's really about the land. It's, it's all interconnected. It, the land provides for us. We are caretakers of the land. We, it's not that we have to prove to the government that we have title uh, as it's not that we don't have title. It's just us giving the opportunity to whether it's the federal or the provincial government to, to have that opportunity to recognize what title is and what those rights are and that, that the title is there and that we just have to uh, try our best as an Indigenous peoples to show them um, what, what uh, title is and so that they can recognize that in their courts and in their law systems. 
and so that they can teach that to to the youth of the province and and to the children in the school system so that and also to to nations uh worldwide to know that it's possible that it's something that we can have so uh it's something uh that i'll remember for for the rest of my life and something that i've witnessed uh, with my own eyes to see the the dozen or so uh, supreme court judges all uh they had no choice to 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 um to recognize that we had uh, title title land and and rights to to the uh, to the it's roughly 1900 square kilometers and so that's where the the title lands is around the northern part of Chilco Lake and it encompasses uh the one of our six communities in the South Dakota nation known as Haniguitin Namaya Valley and it also kind of follows the river that comes from the north side of the lake and it goes up um, um, roughly 30 kilometers or so, 20 kilometers or so. I, I could be wrong on that part, but um, that part I'm not too familiar with because I recognize our, our entire area as, as tidal land. And it's something that I look forward to working with the leaders and the provincial government and the federal government to, to have the rest of it recognized as that's just the start of it and then so um yeah it's very very important for me to to continue that work to continue the the prayers and the songs as that's what keeps us going as indigenous people continuing to be who we are as Hakotin and, and to carry that spirit the the strength that our ancestors fought for those 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 warriors that got hung, their spirits are here with us today doing the work and they're, they're behind us, uh, guiding us in our, our every step to, to, to do this good work. So, yeah. No, and what was the sense of the nation when the Supreme Court's case was decided? Because in, it was so historic to guarantee title and really revolutionized jurisprudence in Canada, but maybe also rippling around the world as well. Chief, could you share that moment? Yeah, that was a that was a historic uh, historic day and a historic time. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of interveners uh, yeah. that intervened from across the right across Canada. You know, so that was quite something, and I think that's what kind of threw off the. The judges and all the lawyers that were there, they I don't think they knew what hit them. And you know, it was a pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful day. And uh from there we um we celebrated and I think right across BC in Canada and basically when we got over here to the to the United Nations Forum in New York, uh, and also over into Geneva, you know, we we were um, celebrating, but uh, letting people know uh, what what that was all about, and uh, basically giving every all the other nations hope uh, worldwide that uh, they all have title also, and for them not to give up. You know that's uh, that's what it's all about, and uh, the governments and industry have to realize that uh, you know that they can't continue to. Uh, um, deny the nations of this world that um, they have uh, Aboriginal title and rights, but uh, more more important, uh, the human rights. And that's what that's all about, uh, you know, so it's really important. Thank you. <clears throat> that's a great point. Thank you so much. How, what's it like to be here at the UN Permanent Forum this week? You're at the 21st session. What were some of the highlights and what points did you raise this week? Uh, Chief, if you want to go first and then move to Pale. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the things that we were um, 
managed to get on the floor again at the UN Forum, uh, Indigenous uh, Indigenous Forum there. Uh, but uh, we we still have um, miners that are we're dealing with in our territory, and they still haven't quite uh, gotten the picture that we have title and we have uh, full jurisdiction of our of our territory. And but um, yeah, we want to. Uh, let them know industry and uh, governments know that uh, they can't continue you know without uh, consent you know right now we were um, holding the miners off and that's uh, we have we got consent and uh, you know they need our consent to if there if, if there's any going to be any movement at all but um, right now there's uh, decision there no mining whatsoever to that's uh that's why we do have a million fish that come back every year if there's they're trying to get up into that area so right now we're saying no our food is more important and uh, clean water is more important than any amount of gold or our money you know, that's that's what we're all about and we're six communities and we all we're all all the people in our ter in our nation. There, that's what they want. It's the food over anything else in their traditional way of life, and you know, so that um, it's very important uh, case. And we're gonna push until we get a hundred percent title back. And uh, basically, our leaders from long long ago they they had a you know we can't uh, give up until. Uh, until that is done, we have an honor and a duty to uphold, um, you know, because of that. And if we have to go all that, do that again, if we have to declare war or, you know, if we have to, um, whatever, whatever it takes, we'll, we're, we're going to get her done for the ones, all our sales caught in that are here now and the ones that are not here yet. You know, that's what it's all about. And that's definitely why it's important for you to be here for the main agenda item, the theme of indigenous peoples, business, autonomy, and the human rights principle of due diligence, including free prior informed consent. So it's definitely great that your voice is added. And Pale, I think this afternoon in the middle of the events, you were at a circle. Can you share us a little bit about the, the drumming circle and what you were doing there and why that was important as well as being inside the room and any other highlights of your time here so far at the 21st session of the Permanent Forum. Yeah, that was uh, was definitely a highlight in um, uh, for this week. It was it's um, quite the opportunity to to sit around that uh, that grandfather drum with with fellow singers coming from from all over all over Turtle Island, North America, and it was uh, another thing. I'll I'll, I'll really uh, uh, I'd re I'll really be excited to to share with uh, with uh, my relatives back home is that um, we got to sit around that drum and and we had no idea who 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 was who where they came from. So uh, we sit down and we sing these songs and. And we all know the songs. We know the words, whether it's a Lakota, Sioux uh, prayer song, or if it's a, a Plains Cree round dance song, or if it was uh, another round dance song that comes from uh, the Algonquin territory. And we were singing them together, like as as if we've been singing for years together. And it was uh, it was very. Uh, uh, very uh, spirit lifting and it was uh, a really positive moment to to be able to sing those songs and to to vibrate the buildings around uh, on the streets of uh, New York City and when when we prepare and when we we left uh, uh, British Columbia the the South Coast Indian Territory um, it's it's like we're okay. We're getting ready for business. We're gonna go sitting in uh, a, a forum. We're gonna go sit in a, a big meeting room, and there's not gonna be much room for for culture, or for language, or for songs. 
and it's uh it's it's really like a relief to to express ourselves the way that we that we always have and that's through through song and dance and uh through uh sharing that heartbeat with uh, the grandfather drum and that's some that i feel uh us as indigenous are, are are really well known for is not being a, being shy from uh, uh, portraying ourselves uh, like vibrantly as as indigenous people. We're we're not scared to show off our colors. We're not scared to to whoop and holler around. And uh, that's uh, that's something I'm very proud of. And so I'll, I'll be proud to say that uh, I've sang with uh, uh, new relatives, new brothers that I've made. And um, it's always something now, no matter where we travel, whether it's New York, whether it's uh, in uh, Geneva, Switzerland, or even if it's just uh, Vancouver, BC, everywhere we go, it's like uh, they they know that word side coating and they know they it's like, they know that side coatings are in town so they know something's going down and they know that there's going to be some singing somewhere they know there's going to be some drumming or they know that there's uh some serious business going down whether it's meeting with some uh miners mining companies or or if it's just a simple gathering to meet with uh more relatives and 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 nations uh, across the country so um i look forward to uh to uh, finishing off the week, uh, meeting with uh, more relatives and to create creating those connections that we get to make uh, in the United Nations. It's it's like uh, even just us at Saif Colton, when, when we walk into the, the permanent forum, I feel like we're magnets to to other indigenous groups that they 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 know where Saif Colton, they, they know the work that we've done. They know the work that we can do. And so it's just like a pre-European contact when nations uh, went to visit each other, they they traded with materials. Tsaikotin were very well known for having uh, trade traded with uh, obsidian and uh, the glass stones. And, and it's still like that today. Uh, without the physical objects, we're trading that knowledge. Uh, like we go to Aotearoa and, and, and we meet with our Maori whanau, we traded uh, with our knowledge as, uh, for example, maybe Tite Kote In lacked a little bit of strength in the economic development side of things. And the Maori are doing very well in their 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 tourism part and then their economic development, but they lacked uh, a little bit on their title and their rights and their working with their laws and things like that. And so we helped them and we show we showed them how we did our work in the title case. And so it's just like that uh, how we used to trade back before contact, but we're integrating that into today's modern day, and we're able to trade words we're able to trade songs we're able to trade uh, knowledge and we're able to trade that language and to be able to do that so yeah very exciting things going on and things happening being able to come over with uh, my dad uh, chief francis and to experience that and to say that it's a multi-generational uh, experience uh, as a family i've got my daughter here and my wife and we're here, we get to experience that and we get to to share that uh, experience together and we get to bring that home to, to our community and to- No, to... it's absolutely beautiful. It's great to see the whole Ohana there and what you're sharing really about the Supreme Court decision. We know that led probably to the adoption of the UN DRIP legislation in BC and Canada. And we also know that you actually not only participated in Ottawa, but also sang a closing song. I know we only have a couple of minutes, but would you like to share that song with the audience if that's possible? And then we'll close out. But I really want to thank both of you for joining and more importantly for your amazing contribution here at the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Yeah, so um, 
I was actually the first person in Canadian history to to sing on the floor of the House of Commons uh, while I was in session. So it was the only times I've it was the only time I've ever heard uh, it quiet in the House of Commons where the where the parties weren't uh, bickering and arguing with each other. They had to stand up and and honor uh, honor a song that was being sung. So I could I could sing that song. It's uh, our uh, it's our song that uh, talks about our warriors, and it's a, it's more like an honor song. Mahalo, if you could, that's great. And I know we'll have to cut away afterwards, but mahalo, and thank you so much both for appearing today. Mahalo. <clears throat> Thank you so much and hope you enjoy the rest of the permanent forum on indigenous issues and we know the indigenous peoples of the world appreciate your perspective around the planet. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.